Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing very well. Today we're in the F-16C and we're looking at EGI navigation. So this aircraft has several types of navigation and the primary is EGI. EGI is made up from two elements, GPS, which we all know from GPS navigation in our cars, and INS. You can't just run aircraft navigation from GPS. It's simply not detailed enough. So you have to couple that with INS. INS, inertial navigation system. That's made up with purely internal navigation basically a complex system of aligned gyros inside the aircraft. So today we're going to look at adding waypoints within the mission editor here, then flying those waypoints, looking at the instrumentation we've got in our aircraft to navigate between those waypoints. And then we can actually change those waypoints on the flight in the cockpit. One thing we can't seem to do at the moment is add waypoints from within the cockpit. That will probably be added soon, but this is October 2019 and the aircraft has just been released into early access. One thing to note is that for the EGI system to work, we need some kind of alignment to be done. And we're gonna have a separate video on the different types of alignment. So we're gonna click on our plane here. We're gonna add waypoints in the mission editor. So I'm gonna click add, and I'm gonna add one just randomly there. Add a second one randomly there. Add another one randomly there. If you want to add a waypoint at the moment in the cockpit, what you can always do is add a superfluous waypoint here in the mission editor. I can just dump it over there for the time being. And then we can also always change that. And that would be a way of adding another waypoint at the moment. So I'm going to save that up, jump in the cockpit and look at some instrumentation. We've got three ways of viewing these waypoints. One is in the HUD. The second is going to be on a HSD, our horizontal situation display. I'm just going to find that now. It's one of these guys. There it is. Ping. And the third is our HSI, our horizontal situation indicator. We're going to go through all of those throughout the video. In terms of manipulating the waypoints, we use our UFC. So that's our ICP and our DED. The first thing to note that in this aircraft, they're not referred to as waypoints. They are referred to as steer points. So we're going to switch to the term steer points to the hub. We've got currently steer point one selected. That's the first of our chain of steer points. We can see because it says that there and there are currently seven miles from us to the steer point on a slant range. And this all works with the cockpit, sorry, with the HUD in nav mode here. We have a path marker here. This is where our aircraft is currently flying. We have a steering queue here. This guy will lead us to wherever our steer point is and our steer point currently selected steer point which is number one is this diamond here the idea of the game is to move our path marker onto the steering queue which will take us to our selected steer point note that we also have an estimated time of arrival at the selected steer point based on current flight parameters here we've got 51 seconds so the first thing we should do is unpause and fly to that steer point based on the hub one thing we note is that if the steer point diamond goes out of the HUD view, then you can see we get a cross through it, just showing that it is currently outside of the HUD. Now five miles away. So we're aligning our path marker with our steering queue. A bit difficult to do when we're, we're so close to it. One mile. And that's it pretty much. We've just gone over the top of it there. So it's now you can see the direction the steering queue is telling us to turn left. And it's now telling us to turn behind us. We've passed over the steering, uh, the steer point, and this number will now start increasing. So we need to select our next steer point now in the chain. We're currently at steer point one. We can see on the CNI page of the DED, and we use the increment switch on the ICB here, switch to number two. We can now see that we're being told to steer this way for 11 miles at uh, one minute and 21 seconds. So let's make a turn. And there's our guy. So for this, we're going to use our HSD. Got our HSD up. We can see the steer points are represented by empty circles here. And the steer point that is currently, currently selected, which I believe is number two, is the filled in circle there. You can see it's just off our nose. This is our own ship and we are positioned there. Between the steer points is a line drawn. That is known as the course line. If we were to fly this course correctly then we would always be flying or as close as we can to the course line and you can see that we've come quite away from the course line by a few miles here. Other functionality of the HSD is that we can see our current mission bullseye there. We can also change the range currently at 60 nautical miles here. We can change 120, 60, 30, 15 depending on our situation. The view is currently decentered 
at the moment. We can centre it on our own ship here if we want for some reason. By clicking that guy there. The centre of the view is now chasing our own ship here. We'll put that back for now. So we will continue flying to waypoint 2. We've got the HUD and the HSD to use now. At this point we want to change the way the steer point works slightly. So we're going to go on our ICP and press the full button which takes us to the steer point DED menu. Now if we press our DCS switch right sequence here, basically go on that, manual change to auto. That means that when we pass or get very close to the current steer point that's selected it will automatically select the next steer point in the chain. With manual we will have to select them manually as you saw before. So we'll speed up time now as we get to this uh, steer point and see that it auto updates. I'm just going to dive down just so you can visualize this waypoint down here. Sorry, the steer point. Got to get into the new terminology. One mile. B. Okay, going right at the top of it now. And past it. Ah. And what it should have done is automatically updated to steer point 3, but it doesn't appear to be working in early access. So let's just check it did save what I asked it to. Yeah, it is in auto, so never mind. That will be working at some point, obviously. So we're going to manually update with the incrementer to waypoint 3. By the way, you can see lat, long and elevation here on the DED. So next, for this waypoint, we're going to be using the HSI, the Horizontal Situation Indicator. You can find him down here. Again, it's a top-down kind of map view. We've got our own ship here. This shows our current heading. It's going to be about 155. Here is the distance to our selected EGI steer point, about 17 nautical miles. This is our bearing pointer. This shows the required heading, if you like, or the bearing to our selected steer point 3. So the idea is we turn right until this needle points here. We also have a heading, a desired heading marker here that we can adjust with this roller here which we use, use our mouse uh, scroll wheel and move it to a desired heading. The use of that will show in a different video. We've also got a selectable course marker here which you can use with the mouse scroller as well. You can see the exact course that you are setting the course marker to and the function of the course marker or the course pointer is to ensure that you stay on course. If we zoom back to the HSD here, if you, I remind you that our idea is not just to get from that waypoint or steer point to that steer point, but also to stay on course here because there may have dire consequences if you stray too far from the course, like you may run into a SAM site or whatever. Then this guy here allows us to select the required course. I don't know what the required course is, I'm just going to have a guess. Let's just say due west for the time being. So if we wanted a course of due west, a course line due west to follow, we would then have this course deviation line here which shows how far we are deviating from our course. The idea would be to fly as that this course deviation line was central with the course pointer here and that would mean that we were following that course line there. Again, we'll show the proper use of this in another video. So we'll unpause now and just use our flight instruments fly the aircraft onto the course, uh, sorry, onto the heading of steer point three. We're all going to get used to calling them steer points instead of uh, waypoints now. So that's us now on heading to steer point three. You can see that we're way off course at the moment, but it doesn't matter for the moment. See that we're now 12 nautical miles out. We can visualise our steer point on the HUD with that diamond, but we've decided now we want to change that steer point for whatever reason. So we're going to do that now. So we would come from this, the basic main menu if you like, the CNI page. We are now going to for steer point. We're going to select the steer point that we want to edit. So it's going to be steer point number three. I'm just going to pause it there to give me a bit of time to do this. Auto doesn't seem to be working. We're going to take auto off. We're now going to DCS down. We want to change the latitude. So all we're going to type in, uh, we're going to change the minutes slightly to 5.6 instead of 5.5. We're going to type in north. 2.4. 5.6. Three nine zero. When I press enter, watch this diamond here. 
ping, you can see we've now changed the location of that waypoint. All the necessary guidance information, HSD, HSI and whatnot have updated. It's now eight miles off in that direction. Out of interest, we DCS down. We can also change the altitude or the elevation. I don't know, so if we want to change that to 550 feet, then we can do that. It's good practice once you've finished editing a waypoint to go back to the CNI page it's something I'm struggling to remember at the moment so we just DCS return to get back to CNI unpause and continue navigation to our modified steer point 3 you can see that our HSI our bearing pointer is almost perfectly matched with the 12 o'clock position now which means that we are not on course but we are on heading if you wanted to get this course marker pointer to work properly with the deviation you would have to know exactly what course bearing would be from this waypoint to that waypoint that's information we don't have at the moment again we'll go through that in a different video there we go that's waypoint three reach now if we wanted to add an extra waypoint at this point we could do that because in the mission editor we had a superfluous waypoint we could go to waypoint four there and edit it in the steer point page like we showed earlier that's it for egi navigation for the time being we've looked at how to add waypoints in the mission editor how to different ways we can navigate between those waypoints how we can edit and essentially add waypoints in the mission as we go as i said the egs system or at least the ins part of the egs system has to be aligned before we can use it if you have a hot started aircraft like this it will already be appear aligned if you have a cold started aircraft it will need aligning we'll look at that in a different video we've also got more to cover on the HSI again we'll look at that in a different video I hope that helps and see you later